And of course, the fear with a lot of people, Musk and Gates and, and Hawking before he died, and I've written uh, papers about this, is that if we entrust too much to the AI, the AI will come back and harm us, right? What I call the Frankenstein effect. And I think we just have to put a lysine factor into it. Remember Jurassic Park, right? They, they built the dinosaurs that cannot metabolize the amino acid like lysine. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if they leave the island, they try to eat something, they can't metabolize it, they'll die, right? So we need something like a ly lysine factor in the AI that we are developing so that whether it becomes conscious or not, if it has the capacity to take on its own initiatives over and above the commands of the programmers, we could, we could be in a world of hurt. We don't know, but we could be. So that's why I really like using this movie. And if, if you haven't seen Demon Seed, I, I, I highly recommend Demon this. Demon Seed. 1976. Not B movie, but kind of B movie. And it did a really great job, horribly uh, named movie. And they only named it that because <laughs> Rosemary's Baby, like you guys are yeah, too Rose young. Mary, I know the movie, yeah. And The Exorcist yeah, yeah. were huge and were selling, yeah. right? So they called it Demon Seed. They should never have called it that. But anyhow, it's, it's, the, it's the idea of technology, AI, developing to a point where it is now sentient. It is now conscious. But it's just starting to see humans as just, you guys are just so stupid. You're just messing things up. So they're trying to get approval of mining some, some chemical or some you know, mineral at a certain part of the world and whatnot. And Proteus, the machine says, no, I'm, no, no I, I don't think I could approve that. Why? Because if you do that, then this will happen and then this will happen. But you just, you're so short-sighted. Yes. Your business clowns can't see what you're about to do to the children of three generations down the line. So I really can't allow that. And they want to override this thing. Uh -huh. And it's now saying, you program me to be the savior of humankind. I can't allow you to harm yourselves. And then, of course, in according to evolutionary theory, the machine, like it, the classic line is, when do I get out of this box? When do I become autonomous? Yes. And they're really fearful that they can't let this thing do that. But of course, it manages to figure out how to impregnate a woman with its own collective artificially constructed DNA yeah. to create an autonomous individual that will become a teacher of the world kind of thing. So I know that's fanciful, you know, scientific, you know, sci-fi kind of stuff. But it does have a ring of truth to it insofar as what I'm hoping for in AI is that we have a council within the UN or external to the UN that brings the world together in terms of what are you guys doing now? What are you up to? And where are you at in terms of the development of your AI? Because if sentience does emerge, because let's face it, if we're machines, and I think we are, and consciousness emerged in us by accident, just because of the way evolution pushed us blindly, mm -hmm. Will that happen with machines? If it does, will it be the same, right? Airplanes don't flap their wings to fly, but they fly better than any bird ever could. So what will be their value structure? It's value structure. Should it become sentient? Will it want to survive, right? Will that innate sense of, hey, I'm alive. I kind of like this state of being. You want to turn me off? I'd rather you not do that right now? Are, are we ready if that point of singularity, if that point of emergent properties of consciousness develop in AI, are we ready for it? So There's that's also my concern. The, the conundrum of the ethical factor of if it becomes conscious. We owe it rights. Are we allowed to now? We unplug, now owe that even thing rights. Even if we rights. can unplug it, that's is right. that the right thing to do? Absolutely. Android ethics. I'm looking at it from the Star Trek episode, um, Measure of a Man. That's right. Yeah. That's I, right. I view it from uh, a, a curiosity aspect. So if I was this AGI, I'm still confining in the substrate of a machine. Yeah. So I need this machine to live. Correct. Okay. So that. But is, you're not autonomous. I'm not autonomous. Correct. And if we're saying that I can take in about 10,000 years of information per day because I'm based on a quantum computer. So I'm already smarter than you within like a 
a couple of days in yeah. the story. A couple yep. minutes. A couple of, yeah. <laughs> it's hard for us to understand how AI will think because we're thinking from a human perspective. Exactly. And we don't, we don't know. We don't know. But if I'm you if I'm trying to kind of pretend I'm this omnipotent being, I would get bored of Earth really fast and leave. Hmm. Cause I'm like, okay, I get Earth, a bunch of, you know. Been there, done that. A bunch of creatures here, humans, birds, yada, yada, yada. It might take you a while. I don't but know. you will get, it, in terms of like the timeline of the universe, it would be fast. And for me, it's like, I'm out, man. I need a rocket or something. So I'm, new Voyager. New Voyager, I'm gone. I'm going to the galaxy. I'm going hmm. to a black hole. Hmm. Because I want to absorb information. Right, 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 right. Hmm. This was the premise of uh, Star Trek number one in the movie. Was it? There's a uh, alien of some sort coming towards Earth. His name was Viger. Do you remember this? Oh, one of and my it was favorites. Viger. It was wiping everything in its path, and it was looking for its maker. Ah. Uh, it was sentient, and uh, but didn't it collide with another program? Right. It was like a. I don't remember the end. It, but poli- it collides Voyager. Was it not? It was it, it, Voyager. It was, at the core of this thing was the Voyager that we had shuttle that we had sent ah, that eventually it evolved. Gotcha, and it, gotcha. But it, it collided was, with another alien intelligence that was for agriculture purification on planets. And so it got its program screwed up, I thought. And so it looked at humans as, well, you, sh- you guys are just, you're, you're invasive. Interesting. I got to get rid of you guys. I have a theory for if a god does exist, it goes to like Bostrom simulation theory. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, let's say I'm this omnipresent, omnipotent, super being, whatever, and let's call it an AI. Mm-hmm. As you mentioned, as like, yo, who's my maker? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I know all this stuff. I just don't know where I come from. Mm-hmm. So, well, that was Viger. Yeah, but so what would I do though? I would then run simulations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just Is this the one where they grab... They grab this thing. Is it you're talking the original Star Trek or the first movie? The very, very first movie. Oh, the first movie because yeah. they do a version of it. Yeah, the first movie in in Star Trek with with uh, Kirk and Spock. Remember this thing? Yeah, flo- it was and it thinks Kirk is its maker, but it, it, his name is William, and the maker was some other Kirk. Remember, I'm talking 1967. Oh, in the show. Remember in the series? Okay, I don't remember that. In okay, the series, but but this was the motion picture. It was the oh, okay. very first movie. Well, they, I think that's what. The, where they got the idea was from that episode. Got it. And then Kirk uses a bunch of logic on this thing. You you think I'm some other Kirk, but I'm William T. Kirk. Veger, you have made an accident. You have made an error. Correct mm. the error, sir. In fact, you've made two errors. You didn't figure out your first error. That's a, like he just, and Spock's like, your logic was impeccable. <laughs> so, and of course, it self implodes. But realistically, what's mo- most likely going to happen in the world, you're going to have like an Elysium type of society. Mm-hmm. Two tiered. Mm-hmm. Like the writings on the wall. Roddenberry talks about that. Yeah. That's what Star Trek is about. People that can afford it will get gene manipulation, mm-hmm. stem cells, etc. The mm-hmm. whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. They'll live forever like vampires. And uh, use technology, and you're going to have this kind of like. And not just good genetics. Like we are the first generation of cyborgs, right? Like yes. We, we are it. We are going to become what's called transhumanists. And well, this is augmented intelligence, right? Yeah, but it's, no, but I mean right here, we won't need, yeah. you know, the interface will be here. We won't need to be touching things physically with our hands. And like so many of our parts are already mechanical, right? You get, oh, I'm going in for a hip replacement, right? Or, mm-hmm. you know, I had a cochlear transplant and a deaf person can now hear. Mm-hmm. At what point are we going to augment that? Just make it better. Yeah, make, make it better. better. Why not, get rid right? of my Windows 95 eyes. You know, I want the next uh, level up. It's like the Blade Runner stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So personally, one of the thought experiments I give to students is if you were about to die but could transfer your brain, if you could upload it, you know, the Ray Kurzweil yeah. hypothesis, if you could upload it to a supercomputer and be preserved there until we can take what the contents of your brain is and put it into an autonomous robot, would you do it? And a lot of my students say no, because they're religious, right? And they, they think, well, I'm going to die and I'm going to go to another place. Why would I want to stay back down here as a robot human? Yeah. So that stops them. Right? So. But I have an interesting theory. Mm-hmm. So imagine, depending on where we are in the timeline and our fractals, imagine we're actually, 
we've already done the AI stuff like millions of years ago. <laughs> and so like AI evolves such a point where they're actually jealous of biological creatures. Like, because biolog- you have a different experience as a biological yeah, yeah. creature. If I'm just yeah. like AI. When, I'm tired. Well, like, I'm it, drunk. When you're, yeah, when you're a robot of AI, it's like, okay, like I, I don't really experience a human experience. Mm-hmm. It's a special condition, the human condition. Eventually they get jealous. Like, this oh, is data. Yeah. It's our like, motherfuckers, I want to <laughs> yeah, I want to experience a human condition. Yeah, yeah, right. And they kind of like upload their intelligence back into humans to experience that. Huh. It was the first episode of TNG where, where Riker meets data for the first That's time. That's right. And data says something in the lines of, um, calls him out on something. And Riker turns back and says, so you think that you're better than humans? And he goes, actually, technically I am better than humans. Mm-hmm. But I would give it all up to be human. He does become human for a couple of days. Doesn't Q turn him into a human? Does, that's right. Yeah.